Hello, today I want to show you how to draw a perfect egg using geometry. Okay, so what I'm mixing is formal geometry with nature. And isn't nature wonderful? So what I've got is five dots here, which I've already mapped out to make a pentagon. If I threw it away, it would be a penta gone, but it's here. And inside the pentagon, I'm going to form a pentagram. And the pentagram was used by the Pythagorean cult in southern Italy, the followers of Pythagoras, and they felt it was magic, just magic. And in a way, I agree with them. So a pentagon and a pentagram, you need to join opposite corners. Wonderful thing about the pentagon is all these lines are divided by golden ratio. There's two things you can measure. You can measure that distance there, short distance to the side, or the long distance across there. Divide that into there, you always get the golden ratio. But even when you split it up again, divide that into that golden ratio. And it's, it's just absolutely beautiful. But how am I going to form an egg? Something that's natural, something that has a natural shape in nature. Well, a few more lines, okay? First of all, through this point here, parallel to the base, I'm going to draw another line. Now, two more lines. One from there, the end of that one, to there. And one from here to there. And all my line drawing is complete. Now for the egg. A hen is a production line of eggs. There are nine in the process, from the very smallest to the one that's going to be delivered today. And it's the one that's delivered today that I'm going to show you now. First of all, I'm going to ask you, which end of an egg comes out first? The thin end or the thick end? Did you know? Well, I'll tell you the answer is the thicker end. Why? And I'm going to explain that. What I'm going to do now is draw a semicircle. It's going to go from this point here down here. Now, it nearly coincides with the bottom line, but it doesn't. It overlaps it slightly. What I'm drawing shows you just how the hen's egg is laid. Because when it's laid, the shell is soft. And as it's soft, the egg inside has been, more or less, a perfect ball. And as it begins to be laid, it's pushed out just like a water bubble coming out up from the bath. A perfect hemisphere. A perfect half sphere, and that's what I've drawn here, and that's the bottom of the egg. As it does, it grow, Johnny, because it doesn't come out. Presumably, the hole in the chicken's not that big, so it comes out thin but, and then blows. But the up. whole the whole stretches perfectly <laughs> to cope, right? And it allows it. And of course, the pressure inside the body is pushing it out, but it acts just like water, forming a perfect hemisphere, right? When it's half out, already it's beginning to solidify. But the rest has to be uh, thrown out, and the rest is forced out through the pressure inside. But now I need some more curves. So I'm going to take the end line, end point there, and stretch that out to here, and draw that. That's it. I've got it going now. And from the other end, I draw that right on the point, and there it goes. And we've nearly got our egg. Now we've got one more curve to make, and that's the top of the egg. And for that, you need a centre here, and the leg there. Now if I turn that round, it should complete the top of the egg, like that. And there we have our perfect egg. And if you don't believe me, if I bring this to the towards the camera... I'll give you that. My dad used to say, I've got an egg here, fresh. I caught it dropping. <laughs> and, <laughs> so that means it would, the shell wouldn't have been solid because it only solidifies once it's out and the air gets to it and it's a reaction with the air. But it's very beautiful. I don't know any more mathematics that goes with this at all other than the thing is beautiful and it links nature to geometry. And I love them both. Cheers. If you'd like to go even deeper into the mathematics behind egg shapes, this reasonably recent paper may be of interest. They were chasing a universal formula for egg shape. Now for chicken eggs, it looks like this. But for more pear-shaped so-called pyriform eggs, you need this one. Meaning the universal egg formula, well, it's this whopper. The four parameters are the egg's length, breadth, shift of a vertical axis, and the diameter at one quarter egg length. If you'd like to check it out, read all the details. We'll include a link to the paper 
in the video description. And over on our Extras Number File 2 channel, you can see an interview I've just done with a Ukrainian poultry engineer who helped create the formula. That's worth a look too. The principles of evolution, yeah, uh, to deduce another more complicated formula. So it, it, it appeared to be very complicated. It appeared to be awful from, from my point.